move forward, you will hear more about your um, own parish needs and what will be what the funds will be used for here at the parish. So when facilities or when organizations have real needs, that's when a capital campaign comes into being. That's one of the first ingredients of about five things that I'll touch on tonight uh, before 10 o'clock. And then we look at a realistic target or goal. You heard Tim talk about the 29 million that we would say ordinarily uh, and a diocese would be able to raise one time its offertory. And Father will give you the details of your target moving forward. Committed leadership. I've been very blessed to work with 33 parishes thus far and the last 12 are in this wave. Uh, pastors, don't go to seminary for this. Uh, it's not a warm and fuzzy for them. But I always say God calls us to the edge of our comfort zone on behalf of what it is that he wants to get done. And pastors have been truly uh, supportive. And those that have already done this and have it in their rear view mirror at this point in time, uh, are very appreciative of having gone through it. Having committed staffs, I will say having met with your staff and having met with your parish leadership already, you have a gangbuster parish. I'm very excited for the opportunity to work with all of you. And the volunteers themselves. Bishop cannot go to every house, nor can Father go to every house. And so it takes us coming together on behalf of the greater good in order to get this sucker moving along and get this puppy going. And so having committed leadership on all those levels, as well as a communication plan, help me out here, okay, as well as a communication plan that I have to say while people may not like all the answers that they will be given, at least they have accurate information. Then people can make a decision on what they want to do on how it works best for them. And the way to do that is tonight's meeting. Uh, it is incumbent upon all of you when you hear those rumors to say, nay, nay, no, no, I was at the meeting, it's different. Because imagine Bishop Thompson's surprise in one of the previous waves when he went to the meeting and somebody stood up and said, well, I heard y'all are gonna be building a new cathedral on the north side of Evansville. He said, as your bishop, you would think I would be one of the ones to know that. <laughs> that was the rumor at that location. Uh, another location, I heard you're, you're coming to announce that our pastor is going to be reassigned. Bishop said, I sent a letter. I would never stand before you and tell you that. The only decision we need to make is, is he going out head first or feet first? That's it. So the rumors will be out there. Please make it a point to search out that accurate information. Additionally, there will be bulletin and pulpit opportunities. And I would imagine they'll begin in February for the pre-campaign. And then beginning in March, the actual campaign is due to kick off. Weekly information there, as well as the message carrying articles uh, in regards to the campaign effort and on evdio.org, which is the diocesan website, that has the blue campaign brochure with all of the information in regards to the diocesan ministry initiatives, as well as the campaign video that's on there as well. You can choose to be well-informed and educated so that when fellow parishioners are out there with any of a number of sundry items that they have discerned, kind of, sort of, not quite, uh, you can have accurate information. And finally, let me share with you that every registered household will receive a campaign packet. In that campaign packet will be the blue brochure on the diocesan initiatives. It will have the famous letter of ask that I'll talk a little bit more about. And it will have um, on the inside pocket of the blue brochure, it will have the parish insert for how the funds are going to be used here at the parish. So all of that uh, communication plan, as well as 24-7 availability uh, to me. 
I was silly enough to provide my cell number to all the priests in the diocese. Let me share with you, they have utilized it. In fact, I thought it was interesting tonight, I got the phone call from Father Eugene. Tim didn't, Father didn't, nor did the bishop, but I did. Uh, and so let me get up to the fifth point, which is uh, the personal visits, which has been challenging. Understanding that this diocese has not ever conducted in its almost 75 year history a capital effort of this magnitude at this level. I can share with you, however, that dioceses and archdioceses across the country, as well as nonprofits in general, do as many as three campaigns within a 20 year period. But I will be the first to tell you. Bishop Siegel is not planning at this time, on the heels of this one, that he's going to rally the troops and we're going to do another one back to back. No, no. So take a deep breath. We're just going to do this one right now because there are some real needs to be addressed uh, at the diocesan level as well as the parish level. Let me give you a, a very real need at the diocesan level. I know that CPC, a portion of it, um, goes annually to cover seminary and education. This effort hopes to raise two million dollars on behalf of seminary and education. To fully endow seminary and education, it would take six million dollars in order for that to happen. I mean, seminary and education is long over many years and has a price tag of anywhere from 36 to 45,000 per seminarian per year. There are about 12 or 13 guys that are studying right now, which is awesome, but we have to keep great men in the pipeline. So that is one example uh, at the diocesan level. The, the ambassadors or volunteers would receive training. Every volunteer represents visiting about 10 households. I don't want to go visit anybody and ask them for money. I'm not going to ask you to do that. We streamlined this to make it as warm and fuzzy as possible because while I am shameless at raising funds on behalf of the Catholic Church, it's not at the top of your bucket list, but we can't be successful here without you coming to the edge of your comfort zone as well. And so I've worked with the parishes and we recommend that they offer before and after weekend masses a common area where volunteer ambassadors can meet with uh, the families uh, one at a time that they were asked to meet with uh, in order to present them with their pledge card and in order to have them fill it out and then the volunteer, uh, the parishioner puts the pledge card back in a sealed envelope. It came out of a sealed envelope, it goes back into a sealed envelope after it's been filled out and the volunteer becomes a glorified courier to get it back to the parish office on a weekly basis. That's what makes the thermometer move, and that's where the success begins and starts to grow and picks up speed. And why do we do personal visits? I can share with you that the model that the starter group uses is, uh, or mirrors, the bishop's pastoral on stewardship for how to do fundraising in the Catholic Church and that is face-to-face -face visits with specific ask amounts. If we were to ask people to make a gift, we could get anything from $5 to whatever they may have on hand at the time. This is a three-year pledging opportunity so that people may choose to give at a greater level over time. You ask me to write a check for five grand, can't do it right now, but if you ask me to spread it out over three years, I can manage that. Uh, the pastoral talks about the specific request amount, and I know you're all chomping at the bit to hear about that aspect. So how do we come up with those individual request amounts? If people participated in the study back in 2015, in the fall, they may have suggested an amount in the study, and so I would double that amount because that was not a prayerfully reached amount. That was, honey, what do you think we can do? Oh, I don't know. What do you think we can do? Well, let's do that. That was not great prayer and great discernment. Additionally, we take a look, well, we, I, take a look at three-year offertory over um, the most three recent fiscal years. 
That being said, uh, there is also the most recent CPC gift and an executive review as well as a pastor review. Let me stand before you now, tell your friends and family, I have absolutely no right to tell you what to give in this campaign. I don't have that knowledge. It is between you and God. But I do want you to remember what I said at the beginning about 15 minutes ago. Catholics give one to one and a half percent of their earned income on an annual basis back in charitable giving. And God calls us to 10. So everybody's in a different space on the road to being a good steward. And no one is to judge anyone. But I use the one to one and a half percent in order to figure out what a household may be able to consider, prayerfully consider in this effort. Let me give you a few examples. Wave one, pastor calls up, says, Diane, I have a household that wants to give their gift and I don't know what to do. We haven't started the campaign yet. I said, Father, I'll look them up and try and, and weave their amount into your conversation. And so based on their offertory, this household was going to be asked to consider $1,800 over the three-year life of the campaign for a total consideration of $50 a month. Long story short, household came in, household presented pastor with a check for $25,000. Second example, yeah, my job dropped too. Uh, second example, household was asked to consider $100 a month for 36 months. They came in with a check for $25,000. And the third example I'll share, the household based on their offertory and, and the things I explained uh, was going to be asked to consider $9,000 and over the three year life of the campaign and they came in with a check for $10,000. Now, I share these stories with you because they're real, they're real to this diocese and it shows that their offertory, or offertory in general, is not the best indicator for what a household's capacity may be and what they may be able to consider in this effort. And so that's why it needs to go to each household and it needs to go in prayer. Now the other element that's used to figure out uh, a possible request amount for each household is what I call the Steyer Group Grid. And what that is, is if you have a household that gives $500 or less in offertory, they may be asked to consider $1,800 over the three-year life of the campaign. You take another household that gives $7,000, $8,000, $12,000 per year to the offertory, and using the calculation of that is one to one and a half percent of what they give back, then they may be able to give twenty-five, fifty, or $100,000. They may be able to prayerfully consider that over a three-year life of the campaign. Now, because we as Catholics don't walk around with a great big T on our chest that represents we tithe, nobody knows. So there's no way to know if it's a tithing household that's giving 10000 or if it's somebody of great, great means that's giving 10000 And the reason that I share that with you is because when I train volunteers, I, um, I speak to them about, you meet with a couple and they say, we can't do what we're being asked to do in this campaign. It's ridiculous. We tithe. We're tithing 10%. And it's simply, thank you. You give your gift every week. If everybody did what you're doing, we would not be conducting a capital campaign. And so thank you. We ask you to pray on behalf of the success of this effort. And I will tell you that I've had phone calls from parishioners who are not volunteers. Uh, one woman called me up and I will let the town remain nameless. Uh, she said, it was a ridiculous amount. I don't know where you get off for this. And, I, and she said that she was tithing and I shared with her, please pray on behalf of the success and thank you for your gift. And she goes, you don't want my money? And I was like, no ma'am, if you wish to make a gift, that's awesome, thank you. <laughs> I'm sure we'll find pennies that can, homes for those pennies or whatever. And, uh, and then she said, 
you, we don't have to give. And I said, you pray for the success, and that is your gift. And, and she wasn't pleased with it, but that's how, that's how it is. And then there was a gentleman that called me up, called me up. Uh, bless his heart, he said, my wife and I have not always been tithers, uh, but she passed, and before she passed, we had decided to take the leap and do the full 10%. And so I cannot do what this letter is asking me to consider. And I said the same thing to him. And he said, no, 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 I want you to know. I want to make a gift, but I just can't do that amount. I said, sir, whatever you choose to do is between you and God, and we are grateful for whatever you choose to do. Please pray on behalf of the success of this effort. And I tell all of you that because you're going to have friends and fellow parishioners that go, you know what they told me to give? It's, nay, nay. <laughs> it says, would you prayerfully consider... And everybody's letter has that same line, would you prayerfully consider a gift? So that's truly what the, um, the critical aspect is. But the last point I want to make to you tonight is an example to let you know that um, I walk the walk and talk the talk. We were not always a tithing household. While we always gave 5% to church, I think it's because I actually worked for the church for so many years and saw the needs were so real. We always did the 5%, but our two daughters were our best nonprofits. They got the rest, which is true for many households, I would imagine. But they're grown, they're gone. We reevaluated, we took steps over the years, and we finally made it to 10%. Well, the Archdiocese of Denver did a capital effort on behalf of seminary and education and the two seminaries that we have in Denver, a $35 million project. The, diocese, the Archdiocese, uh, or the seminary got it all, and the parishes got nothing. And so we got this letter in the mail that asked us to prayerfully consider a ridiculous five-digit gift. And I laughed, and my husband was not amused. He found no humor in that at all. And I said, no, 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 you don't understand. I do this for a living, honey. Let me explain it to you. And I explained everything to him. And I share this with you because I said to him what I want each of you to share with each other when you get the letter, and hopefully you're sitting down because you're going to clutch your heart, more than likely. We have to make a gift that well represents us in this effort, whatever it is, whatever works for us. So we pray about it, we do the math, and we figure it out, and that's the gift that we make, and that's what we did. And that is truly all you are being asked to do in this effort. Now I will say, I've spent about 20 minutes talking about money, 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 money. Let me share with you that that is secondary. That is the byproduct of this effort. First and foremost, this is about community. This is about getting behind a project that's bigger than ourselves on behalf of something that is incredibly near and dear to us, which is our parish. And, and that's why, or that's how, community gets built. Asking volunteers to visit with 10 households, people will meet some who they know, some who they don't know, and some volunteers won't mind if they meet with either group. But I can't tell you how many volunteer ambassadors have shared with me what great visits they've had with fellow parishioners who they now know, even in small communities, parishioners who they may not have taken the time uh, to stop and chat with, or to hear about, or to pray together uh, regarding illness in the family. And so first and foremost, this is a capital campaign that is to provide an opportunity to come together as community, the byproduct of which uh, this parish, as the 33 before, uh, as well as the diocese, will make it a better place for those yet to come. So thank you for your time this evening. Wake up those who were napping, and I'm going to turn it back over to Father Bernie for uh, Q&A. Thank you very much. I do want to add one thing to what Diane shared. As far as volunteers, um, one of the things we know uh, from, from this process is when there is a personal face-to-face -face ask, the people tend to give 40%, 42% more whenever it's a face-to-face -face ask, rather than just a letter going to the home. So 
your participation makes a big difference. And I'll tell you, in our experience, in my mind, I was going to ask the um, parish leadership to be the volunteers. People on the school board, parish council, finance commission, all the other commissions, and had a list of about 65 people. And I was going to strong arm them in doing this. Um, they were pretty slack about jumping in on this thing, of which I was surprised. There were a lot of good people that were at town hall meeting that chose to be a part of it. Folks I knew, folks that weren't real actively engaged in a lot of other things, short of just being there in prayer. They did a fantastic job. And and most of them were coming back with stories about, you know, this was kind of nice. I, I, I've seen that person, but I didn't really know him, and we met, had coffee together at the Donut Bank, and and just had the nicest visit. And, and a number of those people were people saying, you know, Father, I don't have much money I can give this thing, but I can give some time. And and they did a fantastic job. So a real encouragement, you you all can make a big difference as a volunteer. Uh, get six, seven, ten names, and just chip away at it. And uh, it, it can be a really a, a great experience just to get to know some folks in the parish maybe you don't know real well. Give the real mean ones to the pastor. <laughs> You'll have a big list, I can tell you that much. So, not because there's that many mean people, but just pastors get a big list. Okay. <laughs> so, at this point, we would love to uh, try to field some of your questions. So, if you have a question, please raise your hand, and, and I'll do my best to try to address that. Well, great. Thanks for coming tonight. <laughs> Any questions? Yes, sir. Oh, sorry. Oh, thank you. Okay, so some of the visits we had, the question was, uh, does uh, Nasser uh, volunteer get to pick their families that they can visit? It, it, the, so the question, do, do the volunteers get to pick who they would solicit? I, I think it's up to each parish to come up with their own process, and I don't know, Father Eugene, if, if you've decided that yet. I, I can tell you what we did is, based on the number of volunteers that we had, we then had the number of households that we would contact personally. And and so once we had that number, we, we held a lottery, essentially. We let every, all the volunteers drew a number, and if you drew number one, you got the first pick, and you said, I want my mom's name. <laughs> I know her. I, I'll, I'll, I'll talk to my mom. And the next one said, well, that's my next door neighbor. I'll take that one. And, then, and you just, we just kept going around until till we had those seven to ten names of peace chosen. That's what we did. I like that idea. This will move things along. So what Father Eugene said, what Father Eugene said, it's first come, first serve. So if the first one to volunteer gets to pick seven to ten names, and, and you're off to the races. So um, that, that sounds like the process that will be used here at, at St. Isidore Parish. Uh, another question? Man, you guys are... You're doing good. We're not going to have this uh, meeting after the meeting in the parking lot till midnight. That, that doesn't happen in Dubois County, I'm pretty sure. But back when God still loved me, I was in Jasper. Uh, we'd had those kind of meetings. Yes, sir. When you. There you go. Thank you. When. Uh, the person meets with you and gives you your amount you're supposed to give, do you have to give him that answer that night or can you think about it for a couple of days and then send it back? Thank you. So so the question is, if you're one of the families that's going to be solicited with a personal visit, when they come to visit and, and, and present your pledge card to you, do you have to respond immediately? And, and first of all, you will know what's in that pledge card when they come to your house. Because when you get your packet in the mail with the brochure and your personalized letter, that letter will say what the number is that's going to be on your pledge card. 
So uh, you won't have to clutch your heart when the person comes to your house. Well, you, you will have already done that. Okay, you you have already done that. So so the the hopefully you will have already had a discernment process with your with your household about how you're going to respond to this campaign. Now you may want to ask some clarifying questions, but from what I gather from the majority of folks, when when they arrived, folks had pretty well decided about what they wanted to do, and it was just a matter of them opening the pledge card, filling it out, putting it back in an envelope and sealing it. And the person that comes to visit, they don't know what that number is. And they won't see what you put on your card. And they'll never know. Unless you tell them. So and, and there may be some that say, you know, I need a little bit more time. And I say, well, I'll tell you what, you get ready, you call me, and I'll, I'll bring it over and you can fill it out. Because we, we want them to keep control of that card as much as possible. Okay, I've got a question. Um, I'm a little confused that uh, the parish itself, all these people, I mean, is, is everyone going to get visited and have this opportunity or is, is some going to get uh, that's that's my question there thank you so so the question is who does everybody in the parish get a visit or just some the the number of households that will get visited will be driven by the number of volunteers that you have and so this is the trick with the first come first serve uh, you can keep a list of, of all the names that say they're going to volunteer and you can number them one through 60 and if you get 60 volunteers and you want each volunteer to call on 10 families 10 households that means this parish would be calling on 600 households but if you're a parish of 1500 families and you only have 30 volunteers only the top 300 will get a visit okay now the other families We'll just get the the um, the well, pledge card will be in their packet, and and they can fill that in and drop it in the collection basket or bring it by the parish. But the but the families that have been identified for a personal visit will not have a pledge card in their packet, and and, and because they're going to get a visit, They'll, their letter will say what their pledge amount is, but there won't be an actual card to fill out. And, and, and that's because they're going to get a visit from somebody to bring their card to them personally. Yes, ma'am. People who are not here tonight, how are they going to learn? Very good question. What about the people that aren't here? How are they going to learn? There is a, a, an unfolding marketing plan for your parish that will include bulletin announcements, will include a, a video that will be shown at Mass one Sunday, uh, there will be uh, the letter will have some of these details when you receive your packet and your letter it will have those details and and there will also be um, word of mouth then that's where you know you all will come in on those questions but there's going to be you're going to receive a lot more information in the parish in the weeks ahead before these packets ever go out so you'll have some sense of what's going on well in advance and, and that's a nice thing about the Steyer Group. They've got this model, and they they just unfold one piece after another for your parish as this thing progresses, the steps. Good questions. Yes, ma'am. What's the time frame on when you're expected to start paying? I know initially you're making the pledge, but uh -huh. are, is it okay to go ahead and put a check in that envelope as well or and how do you continue over the three years to turn in the rest of that so it's a good question when is it when does this three-year time table begin for you and, and how do you pay it back and do you you know we, we will be encouraging people to if, if they pledge an amount to maybe write a check for 10 percent but they don't have to but it'd be great if we could collect a little bit of it up front. Uh, and it could start, let's say you get your solicitation at the end of March. And, and you're thinking, well, I really want my three-year period to begin June 1st. 
and I want to pay, I want to just take an automatic withdrawal monthly from my account, or I want to pay quarterly, or I want to pay annually, you'll be able to identify that on your pledge card. And, and um, the, this is a wonderful thing for the parish. Having just run a capital campaign uh, at our parish, and we had to handle all the collection and everything at the parish level, send out all the notices and reminders, and oh, you're behind, can, you know, can we help you get caught up? The diocese handles all that for your parish. You, you, they're going to handle all the notices, all the collection. Uh, twice a year, you'll be paid half of what they collect in September and in February. So that's a beautiful thing that you don't have to handle that. But something else about your pledge, and I think this is really important, um, especially for the portion of your contribution that goes to the diocese. I'm not so naive as to think that everything on that list is real important to you. Uh, is that fair to say? <laughs> That's fair to say. You look at that stuff and say, well, how does that help me? But there may be something in there that you feel really strong about. I, I think I can say this. There's no parish the size of, of St. Isidore that has generated as many priest vocations as this one has. Obviously, there's some passion about priesthood and support of seminarians in, in this parish. And you might say, you know, I... I don't give a rip about that, or that, or that, but I, I'm all in on the seminary thing. When you fill out your pledge card, you can identify on there that you want all of your money to go to the seminarian endowment. You, you can just write it at the bottom. Or if you want all of your money to go to Catholic Charities and their outreach, you can write that on the bottom. And your money will be applied specifically to what your intention is. So it's not going to all that other stuff, but it's what you specify. And I had somebody ask the question, yeah, but what if everybody puts the same thing, then what happens? <laughs> Trust me, that is not even close to the issue we've seen. Most people are not going to specify. But if you're one of those folks that's, that you've got some particular interest in some of these things, you can specify on your pledge card. Yes, ma'am. Diocesan level, can people designate where they want their money to go to at the parish level? Because I've had level. that question asked already. That, that's a good question. I haven't heard that one yet. Can can that designation also go at the parish level? 50%. Yeah, the, the fifty percent that goes to the parish. Can they specify like if there are three projects for the parish? <laughs> yes, you can. Thank you. The question again was at the parish level. Can you specify? Let's say there are four different things that St. Isidore has identified for this campaign. There's two. And, and, you, and after you get done, probably Mike is going to talk about the one problem. Okay. So, so you can specify. Thank you. Everybody.